In this video, I will try to show some ways in which a snoot can result in more creative, unique, and artistic images. This especially applies to macro photography and in situations like muck diving where the background is often distracting or there's a lot of potential for backscatter. But can, it can also enhance any macro images. But first, what is a snoot? Well, a snoot is a device that affixes to the end of your strobe and narrows the broad beam down to a small beam. It does not provide the light, but it controls the flash from your strobe by creating a narrow light beam. A snoot helps eliminate a distracting background, reduce backscatter, and helps you to highlight certain aspects of your subject, resulting in more artistic and creative images. Here's an image of my snoot attached to my Eichlite D125 strobe. Let's look at a quick topside demonstration now. I recently purchased a Retra snoot which has some optics inside to help keep a clean, focused beam. And uh, it's kind of bulky, but I keep it attached to my BC with a lanyard. I can easily detach it if I see a subject I want to use the snoot on. And it attaches to the end of my Ike light strobe, easily clips on, just like this. Okay, then I turn the guide light on, and that's very helpful to help to show where the snoot exactly is focused. This also comes with various masking agents which can easily be inserted to create different size and shapes of the beam, okay? So let's say we see this subject here and it's, uh, there, there's a lot of backscatter and a very busy distracting background. Well, I can insert one of my uh, masking uh, agents here and now I can get the correct distance to get the cleanest, most focused uh, beam, and I can position it here directly overhead. Now I'm going to hopefully eliminate a lot of backscatter, and I'm highlighting just the subject and eliminating the distracting background. Also, I can change the angle to emphasize texture, topography, and exaggerate shadows, and I can even make a smaller opening to just highlight one small aspect of the subject. And these are all different creative things you can do with using a snoot. Well, let's look at some examples which demonstrate the advantages of a snoot. Here is an image of me shooting a mantis shrimp at the Blue Heron Bridge. I was holding, aiming, and focusing my camera on the mantis shrimp, which is illuminated from the strobe's guide light through my snoot, which is carefully positioned to capture the shrimp's amazing eyes and minimize background illumination. Now here's the first image taking with my Eichlite strobe without a snoot. It looks okay, it's in focus. Here's the same image taken from the same distance and angle but using a snoot. As you can see, much of the distracting background is eliminated and now the eyes really pop out. I like it so much more. Here's a super macro image of a very small, less than two inches long, juvenile flounder taken with my single Ike light strobe on the seafloor. My camera is on the seafloor so the background isn't really too distracting, but here's the same subject, similar camera position, but now using a snoot. And as you can see, the background is black and the, I think the image is much more appealing. In addition to reducing the eliminating background, it also can reduce backscatter. Now here's a yellow line arrow crab under a ledge. Now I had pointed the strobe back at me to minimize the distracting background, but look at the backscatter. Even though it's a super macro picture, the backscatter is awful. There was a lot of backscatter, too much for me to remove in post-processing. I then pointed my strobe behind the crab Okay, to try to not illuminate the water column between the crab and my camera. And I just caught the crab with the frontmost part of the beam of my strobe. And now the um, backscatter is a lot less, but it shows a really distracting background. Here I used a snoot, okay? And now it looks much better. There's not the distracting background and what little backscatter there was could easily be removed in post-processing. The image pops out and looks much more pleasing to me. And finally, with a snoot, we can make our images look more artistic and pleasing. We can emphasize texture and topography, like this snooted super macro image of the eye of a mantis shrimp. Or we can highlight certain details or aspects of our subject. Now here's a scorpion fish portrait, nothing too exciting. I tried to get closer to emphasize a side view of its beautiful eye, and it's okay. 
I'm focused on the eye, but the background is a little distracting. It's not that special. Here I got the same image, same angle and everything by using a snooted beam. And I think it looks much more interesting now that I'm highlighting the eye and much more appealing. So advantages of using a snoot. The main advantages in my mind are you can eliminate a distracting background, we can reduce the backscatter, and we can make our images more artistic and pleasing. Well, thanks so much for your attention. In the next video, I'm going to discuss top tips for using a snoot and pitfalls to avoid.